Have you tried training methods that just didn't work? Do you feel that your pet is not getting his or her nutritional needs met? Are illnesses and bad behavior your daily norm? You're going to want to join me on the Pet Parenting Reset, where you'll hear interesting and informative interviews and get solutions to all your pet problems. I'm your host, Jessica L. Fisher. Hello, you wonderful pet parent. Thank you for joining me today. Today, we're going to be talking about kennel cough. Now, it may not be the most fun thing to talk about, but it certainly is something worth talking about because a lot of dogs will come into contact with this virus at some point in their lives. Unfortunately, I say because it's very contagious and it's also very uncomfortable. So, there's a lot of information on the internet about kennel cough. You may have actually encountered kennel cough with a dog already before in your lifetime at some point, uh, but there are actually, today's podcast is going to be a little bit different in supporting a dog with kennel cough because I did some research and I wanted to understand how to best care for a dog with kennel cough. Let's first start out with what kennel cough is. It's a virus. And it's, a, like I said, a very, very highly transmissible virus. So it's very contagious. And it can be pretty dark. So depending on where you look, right, some places are going to say it's not a horrible virus. Other places are going to say it really is a horrible virus. Um, now, depending on how you're looking at the virus, I guess depends on, you know, whether you're going to say it's horrible or not. Is your dog going to die from it? Probably not. But so in that instance, okay, it's not that serious, but it is very uncomfortable. In fact, it can be very, um, not only not just uncomfortable, but quite painful. And what we're going to talk about today, I actually found an article from uh, Julianne Lee with the Adored Beast Apothecary because she kind of put a different spin on caring for a dog with kennel cough. And this is this right here in this blog post is the exact type of information that I wanted to get across to you today about actually not, not just what drugs can I give my dog, but how can I actually care for my dog to make sure that they, of course, they're not going to have a great time with this virus, right? But they are going to be as calm and relaxed and get through this as quickly and easily as possible. That's the kind of content that I wanted to bring to you today in this podcast. And Julianne Lee put it perfectly. Like this, when I, when I read her blog, I was like, this is exactly what I was trying to get across. So we're going to go through um, what I had in my mind and how she put it on the page so perfectly. Let's get to it. Okay, so that all of you can find it, if you go to the adoredbeast.com uh, blog and search how to support a dog with kennel cough, you can find everything I'm talking about there as well. At, because I am going to give you uh, her recommendation for homeopathic remedies, which we'll talk about later, can be used in conjunction with antibiotics if your veterinarian deems that antibiotics are necessary for your dog for um, their kennel cough. A lot of times they will. A lot of times veterinarians will just throw antibiotics at almost anything. <laughs> and in this instance, we want our dog to get through this as easily as possible and out the other side as quickly as possible. So we want to do everything we possibly can so that's why I say you can search the Adored Beast blog for the homeopathic remedies for uh, that Julie, Julianne Lee recommends. I will give them to you today um, with the disclaimer that I am not a trained homeopath. These are homeopathic remedies as suggested by Julianne Lee from Adored Beast Apothecary. Um, 
So first, let's talk a little bit more about kennel cough itself. It's a virus. We've, we've established that, that it's a virus and that it's highly contagious and that it is at the very least highly uncomfortable, very probably um, painful and also can be quite confusing in my estimation because if you think about how you feel when you have a serious cold cough and how it can be hard to breathe and the more you cough, the more it hurts, the more you cough, the harder it is to swallow because the more you cough, the more inflammation is occurring in, in your throat. Um, and when you think about bending over, how horrible, first of all, the sensations that you're getting when you try to bend over, uh, or the, and then the, the pain that rushes to you. So when you think about how you feel when you are this sick, then you can then take that and, and impose that on your dog because that's how they're feeling, right? Their body structure is the same. Um, they're getting the same sensations, the same pain um, with this cough, the same inflammation. And uh, even uh, sometimes with kennel cough, their throat can form this like thick mucus, which I'm sure you you can picture, you can feel because we've all been there, right? That this like thick mucus that it's hard, it makes it hard to breathe, <clears throat> makes you want <clears> to, <throat> like I'm doing right now, keep clearing your throat. And all of that can be very confusing to your dog, right? Because it's not, it may be something they have never experienced before. And they're like, what is this? How is this happening? Why is this so painful? Why isn't it going away? Um, how do I make it go away, right? Like they don't understand medicine in the way we understand uh, medicine. They don't understand disease in the way we understand disease. Not to say they're not smart. They are incredibly intelligent animals, but we just, we have a different consciousness of understanding that our dogs do. I think we can all agree that that is uh, our reality. I don't want to say true, but it is our reality. So all that said, <laughs> um, kennel cough does need to be diagnosed by your veterinarian because this coughing behavior and, and the as soon as you notice your dog start coughing, you need to get this diagnosed by your veterinarian because the sooner we can get on it, the better. There are other things that can mimic kennel cough, like pneumonia and aspirated pneumonia. Um, this may also happen if your dog has acid reflux or a vomiting issue and they somehow aspirate, which means to inhale a little bit of that vomit. All of this can look quite a bit um, like kennel cough. Also, dogs with heart disease can cough a lot, um, and they can also develop uh, laryn laryngeal paralysis uh, or collapsing trachea. That all looks a lot like kennel cough, so you do need to make sure to get it diagnosed. That said, that said, according to Julianne Lee, at the very first sign of a cough, she recommends giving Arnica 200C or 1M and Aconite 200C or 1M. So if you're not familiar with homeopathy, <laughs> um, we actually recently just did a podcast on an introduction to homeopathy. So I would highly encourage you to, after you're done with this podcast, go back and listen to that one. I didn't get into the different types of homeopathy, but just to give you a brief overview of what homeopathy is so that you understand it going into this and um, going into reading Julianne Lee's blog on kennel cough. So those are two homeopathic remedies that um, can try, they are not designed to treat kennel cough or the symptoms of kennel cough. What they can do is reduce the severity of the cough. So if it is kennel cough, Number one, if it's not kennel cough, it's not going to hurt your dog. It's only designed to attack the cough itself, so it will just help the cough. But if it is kennel cough, it's going to give you a leg up uh, on getting treatment started because we want to keep the cough as mild as possible because the worse the cough gets, 
the worse the virus is getting, the worse the body is reacting, the more inflammation that is occurring, the harder time you're gonna, your dog is gonna have through this virus. So getting those two homeopathic remedies, Arnica and Aconite, into your dog immediately, then immediately getting them into the veterinarian to be diagnosed. So if it is kennel cough, this is what Julie Lee says to do. So again, she has several homeopathic remedies that she recommends. And while it, it does seem like a lot, kennel cough is something you really want to get top, on top of, like right away. You don't want it to linger. You don't want your dog to get sicker and sicker. So here's the remedies that Julianne Lee recommends. Phosphorus 200C, Drosera 200C, Spongia 200C, Ipecac 200C, and Arnica 200C. All of these together, and then I'm going to just read uh, exactly how she recommends giving these remedies because, again, I am not a trained homeopath, um, so I don't I don't want to provide any <laughs> um, uh, com conflicting information from a trained homeopath like Julian Lee. She says, place two pellets of each remedy in a cup of water. Let it sit for 20 minutes, then stir. Give 10 milliliters or approximately two teaspoons every hour for three hours, then three to four times a day as needed. You should see improvement within 12 hours. If your pup gets worse, stop. You should always be following the recommendation of your vet along with this homeopathic remedy. So whatever your vet is saying, do this in addition. Okay, so let's go on. We know if you've ever heard a dog with kennel cough, and oh my goodness, it sounds horrible. And honestly, my heart just breaks when I hear a dog coughing with kennel cough because I know how bad they have to feel. And then they're coughing and coughing and they're spasming, right? Because that's how consistent coughing goes. Think about when you're sick and how this, the, these, this cough can turn into these like spasms and your whole body is spasming and your throat feels like it's closing. That's how it's happening with these dogs too. So, um, if your vet thinks that your dog may have an a secondary infection in addition to the virus of kennel cough, that's when they may recommend antibiotics. If they recommend antibiotics, that's totally fine. Go ahead and give them the antibiotics. You can actually give them all of the homeopathic remedies that we just listed. In addition to the antibiotics, they are not contraindicated. They are very, very safe. So uh, giving the homeopathic remedies in addition to the antibiotics will help speed up the healing process. But, and here's where we're going to get to all of the things that I really had on my mind and my heart when I wanted to put this information out there. Because the medical treatment itself is great. It's wonderful. It's completely necessary, right? Whether we are doing homeopathic remedies, um, Western medicine with antibiotics, or both. And I would recommend both because, obviously, otherwise I wouldn't have put that information out, <laughs> out today. But... Always, 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 as I've been saying throughout this whole podcast, put yourself in your dog's shoes. Imagine how you're feeling. Imagine how you feel when you're sick and you have this kind of cough. And then that's where we want to go with care for our dog, right? So uh, everything they eat should be soft. Your dog shouldn't be eating anything that's dry. No kibble, no dry treats, no bones, nothing sharp. Everything needs to go down their throat super, super easy, super, super easy. We don't, we don't want anything irritating their throat because their throat is already super irritated, right? We don't want to add insult to injury. Another thing we can do is to give them warm, not hot. Again, we don't want to burn them, but warm bone broth. Um, we've talked about bone broth before. I'm sure on the podcast, I know on, on YouTube and Rumble, we have talked about uh, bone broth and even making our own bone broth. Uh, yes, we did the Longevity Junkie bone broth not too long ago. That's great. Now, really high quality bone broth, especially made for your dog, um, whether you buy that commercially or you make it yourself. I like making it myself just because I know the love that's going into it. But 
Um, you can buy commercially available bone broth for dogs. The, the key here is that they do not make it with onions because onions are toxic to dogs. So make sure you are looking for a dog safe bone broth if you are buying it. Um, another thing that Julie and Lee recommends doing uh, is getting a really high quality Manuka honey. Now, if you've never heard of Manuka honey, I actually just did a Patreon post about Manuka honey. You can go to uh, our, our Patreon um, go to the petparentingreset.com and click on Patreon at the top of the page. You can join for as little as a dollar a month. And this post on Manuka Honey was long overdue because I had been wanting to research it for myself for a long time. And then I gave you all of the information that I found. Manuka Honey is a very special kind of honey. It has, um, it's honey on steroids. <laughs> honey on steroids on steroids is kind of what Manuka Honey is. But when you add Manuka honey, it should be melted. So melt it into the bone broth. The reason that we want it melted instead of just giving a spoonful of honey to your dog is because remember earlier when we were talking about when you're sick and you have that cough that your throat can oftentimes coat itself in that thick mucusy kind of, yeah, we don't want to add more thick mucusy stuff like honey, right? It's going to get stuck. It's going to make it feel even more closed, right? We don't like that closed feeling. Your dog is not going to like that closed feeling. So make sure the honey is melted in the warm bone broth. Um, so mix it really, really well. Make sure that it's not thick at all. Uh, melt it. We want to make sure it's melted, but again, not burning hot. So there, there's, there's, there's a little sophistication there, right? We want to make sure it's it's the perfect consistency, but that Manuka honey can really, really help. Raise their bowls. So if you think about, again, we were talking earlier, when you have that cough and you're all congested and everything is inflamed and you feel like your throat is closing, when you have to bend over, how does that feel? It feels freaking horrible. I know it feels horrible. It feels like my whole face, my nose, my eyes, my sinuses, my throat is all closing in on me. Your dog is going to feel the same way. So we don't want them to have to angle down to get to their food. We want to raise their bowl so they can keep their um, head up as they're eating. Keep the immune system boosted. Again, here we are dealing with a virus. So we want to make sure that they are being supported as much as possible, especially when we think about if your veterinarian does prescribe antibiotics to your dog, we want to support the gut as well because we know those antibiotics are going to not only kill the bad bacteria, but also kill all the good bacteria. So we want to make sure we're giving them a good uh, probiotic to help support the gut. Um, hopefully you were already doing this before, but certainly during and after the antibiotics to, to support the and keep the good bacteria flourishing after the antibiotics have done what they're going to do, <laughs> right? So let's keep their immune system boosted to fight off this virus. Keep exercise to a minimum, and I mean a super duper screeching halt minimum. Literally, all we want to do is go outside to potty and poop. That's it. Um, everything else we want to be just curled up on the couch watching Netflix, right? Um, if you think about if you've ever had bronchitis, I actually fortunately have never had bronchitis myself, but you certainly don't want to be running around. You don't want to be wrestling around on the floor. You don't want to be doing anything. You want to rest and rest and relaxation is what your dog needs right now. Uh, no collars whatsoever. So if you do have to put a leash on your dog to go outside for potty breaks, use a harness. Of course, I talk about this all the time, but this is especially true right now because your dogs, they're already super inflamed and uncomfortable and any, any additional pressure is going to be excruciating to your dog. Any sort of restraint on their throat can start them coughing, and we do not want them coughing. We want to keep them as calm as possible so that their coughing is, is as minimal as absolutely possible. And we want to make sure that your dog has the best airflow they can possibly get. So we want to make sure they're warm but not too hot. We don't want them panting. We don't want them breathing rapidly. Um, that's going to cause them to cough. But... Maybe a rule, uh, you know, 
maybe even a little bit warmer than you would like as long as they're not panting with an oscillating fan that might be a good uh, place for your dog we want to make them as comfortable as possible and keep the airflow going we want to I mean, think of, again, think about how you feel when you're sick and what do you want? What is going to make you more comfortable when you're sick? We want to do the same thing for our dog. So that's really where I wanted to go with uh, the kennel cough information, <laughs> informational podcast today. Um, we know what kennel cough is, right? I didn't want to go too, too in detail with that. And we know that we need to see the veterinarian to treat kennel cough, but I really wanted to get into supportive care for your dog because it's so important. If you think about how you feel when you're sick, the supportive care means so, so much. And the same is true with our dogs. So with that, I hope this was helpful. I hope this gives you some new clarity on supporting your dog through illness, specifically kennel cough, but honestly, through any sort of illness. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me on all those socials. We already talked about Patreon, but I do hope to see you over on Patreon. Again, as little as a dollar a month helps support me to continue to bring content like this podcast to you. Uh, and uh, in addition to the podcast, when you're on Patreon, you get loads of other content, exclusive content that I don't publish anywhere else and behind the scenes. So really, really cool stuff over there. Uh, check out the petparentingreset.com to find the link to Patreon and it'll be right there in the top navigation menu. With that, I hope y'all have a wonderful rest of your day. Give your pets some extra love for me and until next time, bye guys. Ow, ow, ow.